guest chef today is Brownie. <laughs> uh, we're having a little fun today. So um, I am honored to be a part of this um, and cooking for you today. I'm a cancer survivor myself. I was diagnosed in 2016. I had um, DCIS grade three and my margins were too wide for a lumpectomy. So I ended up going with the mastectomy bilateral and had direct to expander um, implants. And then I've had five surgeries in five years because I've, I've had several reconstructive surgeries after that. So um, it's been a journey for sure. Um, I was telling them I actually spent today at Levine having a couple of bone scans for persistent scapula pain. So it seems like sometimes cancer is just that gift that keeps on giving. <laughs> but anyway, I'm doing okay. Um, I'm thankful for health and um, just love giving back to the community when I can. Um, as far as cooking, I've been writing a blog for over 10 years. I love to cook. I'm not formally trained like Laura. She's um, the chef for sure, but I am just an avid home cook and I love being in the kitchen. So I started writing a blog back in 2010 and I've done it ever since. And it's actually for a long time, it was a part-time job because I realized at some point that you could make money blogging. And I was like, that's my dream job. <laughs> So um, I started working with different brands, doing recipe development and creating recipes for them. And then um, uh, my website, I run some ads on my site and that's how um, that, along with brand sponsorships is how I make money blogging. So it's a lot of fun when COVID hit and our gym shut down for six months, I actually went full-time food blogging and I've been doing it ever since. So, um, so yeah, that's kind of my backstory and my blog is Amy Savory Dish. If you're interested in looking at some recipes, I have some of these recipes, two of them actually are on the website, um, the salmon shooters and the cocktail. The ricotta recipe, I actually got that from a friend of mine. She is a registered dietitian. And have, has anybody had roasted grapes before? Have you tried them? They're yes. amazing. And I yes. had never had them before. I went to, she did a cooking demo in Atlanta when we lived in Atlanta. And she made roasted grape appetizers. It was actually with goat cheese and crostini. And it was phenomenal. So um, this recipe is actually from her and it's just one of my favorites. I love to make them. So they're fun to make for the holidays and people that have never had roasted grapes were always impressed when you make them. So kind of fun to do. Uh, so yeah, I guess we'll get started. Um, I've got my San Pellegrino here. <laughs> so we were gonna do, um, you know, typically it's made with Prosecco, um, but since it's just me and my daughter here, if she's going to come in, I'll introduce Lauren, but she's my sous chef. Come over. She's <laughs> involved today. She loves to cook too. Um, Lauren's a senior in high school. Hey, Lauren. <laughs> <laughs> so she's going to be my helper today. Um, so normally this cocktail, the um, orange cranberry Prosecco cocktail is made with Prosecco which um, if you're not familiar with Prosecco, it's basically an Italian version of champagne. The Prosecco comes from Italy and the wine regions there. It's a drier um, sparkling wine, um, which is why it's perfect for this recipe because you're gonna add some fruit juices and you don't want a sweet wine when you make this because it will make it overly sweet. So you can use a sparkling white wine, just make sure it's on the drier side or you can use champagne. Um, and a lot of people wonder what's the difference between champagne and Prosecco. It's champagnes from France and the regions of France and produced there. And Prosecco is actually uh, produced in Italy. So just so I'm not a wine connoisseur, but I do know that. So I thought I'd share <laughs> in case you wonder. Um, so we're gonna do it with Pellegrino today as a mocktail. Um, I didn't wanna waste a whole bottle. And of course, Lauren can't enjoy this yet, so. <laughs> Um, this is 
a very simple recipe. Um, you're just, it's, it's for four people. So small servings, you can double it, triple it if you're gonna make it for more people. I've got a couple of champagne flutes. And what you're gonna do, I already have the squeezed orange juice. So you're gonna add um, fresh squeezed orange juice. First goes the um, orange juice in the glass. And I'm gonna measure out one ounce per glass. So pour in here. And you can buy, if you don't want to go through the trouble of squeezing oranges, you can find fresh squeezed orange juice, just not from concentrate in the produce section of the grocery store, which just makes your life a little bit easier. Um, so you don't have to squeeze oranges unless you just want to. Um, next, we're gonna do the cranberry juice. So I think you can see everything pretty well. And we're just doing one ounce of each in each glass. So I'm gonna go ahead and pour two ounces in here and divide it up between the two. So it's kind of like a mimosa with a holiday twist with your cranberries. And then you're just gonna add your sparkling wine or your Prosecco or your champagne or as a mocktail, your sparkling water. You can use flavored waters for this too. It's if you wanna add a little extra flavor. And then to make it pretty, just drop a few fresh cranberries in. And then I like to put an orange slice on the rim. So pretty. So they're fun, they're festive, yeah. they're pretty. Um, and you can do more or less of the cranberry juice or orange juice depending on your taste buds. But yeah, cheers. Cheers. <laughs> cheers. <laughs> cheers. <laughs> All right, so that's recipe number one. Any questions? And that's pretty simple. Yeah, I was going to say, it's pretty simple. You should be able to, and you can, um, what do you call it? People can make it on their own too, which is what I like. They can even, if they're coming to a party, do that themselves. You can set up a little, so. Exactly. Nice. Set up your bar and just have help yourself. Yep. I like to do that. All right. So I'm going to move all this out of the way. So is anyone cooking along with me? I couldn't remember. Um, no, I am not. Okay. I was going to originally, but now I'm not. Because <laughs> okay. I made your chili, remember? <laughs> That's right. That's right. And I hope you like it. Please uh, send me some feedback. If you like it, put a comment on the blog. I love that. That's um, great. I will, because I, I started following you. So I'll, I'll let you know. Okay, thank you. All right, so now we're gonna move on to the smoked salmon shooters. And this is just one of those recipes that it's so simple. Um, it's incredibly healthy. You've got the omega-3s in the salmon. You've got the protein in the Greek yogurt or the skier. Um, have you ever had skier? Do you know the difference between the Greek yogurt and the skier? No, although I could not find, I looked today, I could not find um plain i i got vanilla uh, actually i got key lime just to taste it but i haven't tasted it yet but i could not find the plain the plain okay siggy's is one of the there's icelandic uh provisions i believe is one brand that i can find at Publix. siggy's is a well-known brand of they have skier yeah um but it comes from iceland and it's thicker and creamier than yogurt, huh. um, which it's just very rich tasting. It's just creamier, it's thicker, but Greek yogurt, plain Greek yogurt works just as well in this recipe. So you can use either one. Um, I kind of use what I have on hand. Uh, when I, I almost always have Greek yogurt in the refrigerator. I love plain Greek yogurt. I'm actually one of those people that likes plain better than flavored. <laughs> To me, it's just, I love the tartness of it. Um, I could eat tzatziki sauce by the bowl. 
So I don't know if there are any other fans of tzatziki, but I love it savory. So I actually love plain Greek yogurt. Um, so I'm starting here with the, the base of the salmon shooters, which I put, um, I went ahead and pre-measured. I put two cups of the Greek yogurt in, in the bowl. And then to that, I'm going to add the um, red onions. So that's coming in. You're gonna finely dice these because you're gonna pipe it into the glasses. Um, you wanna make sure it's very finely chopped. So I'm gonna add those in there. I'm assuming too um, that you could you could have this recipe also. Cut it in half. You, oh, for sure. You sure yeah. can um, have the recipe and um, you can serve it on a platter. If you don't have the shooter glasses, I mean, that's definitely not something you have to have. You can serve the, the sauce in a bowl and then let people make their own crackers um, and assemble themselves. That's another way to do it, to enjoy the recipe without having to make the fancy shooters. I like them because they're fun and the presentation is pretty. But yeah. you definitely don't need to go out and get those. And we were talking before we recorded about the glasses. And I can send a link from Amazon on where you can find those. But they're um, they're just small, small glasses with a spoon. And they come with the spoon. Um, and you, I've got, I got these at Home Goods. You can get them on Amazon. They're just really fun. And you can get disposable ones. You want to not wash dishes and just throw them away. Um, there's a catalog. There's an online catalog called Restaurant Wear, and they have really fun um, containers for serving appetizers, and they would have those kind of products. So that might be something you want to check out. So I've got the red onions in here. Um, next, I'm going to zest a lemon. I use a microplane zester for this. Do you, do you use these? When you, yeah. yeah. These are great and um, just zest it right over the bowl. So you're going to use two teaspoons. I'm, I like to just eyeball, but for the recipe, I'm going to give exact amounts. But when I'm cooking at home, I don't always measure. I just go by what looks good. I'll get this lemon all zested. All right, that's good for demonstration purposes. So I've got the lemon zest in. Um, the next thing I'm gonna go for is a little salt. I want some flavor. So put some salt in there. And then I've already chopped some fresh dill. Um, this is a game changer for this recipe. So you definitely don't want to skip the dill unless you just don't love dill. But I love the flavor of fresh dill in this recipe. So you're going to put about two teaspoons into the mixture. And then um, you've got uh, half, so I've already chopped the cucumber. You take one mini cucumber, you're gonna peel it and you're gonna slice it and then dice it up into very small um, pieces. I use the mini um, seedless cucumbers so you don't have to worry about seeding them. And then I'm gonna put half of these into the yogurt sauce and the other half will go in the shooters in the glass. Anybody have any questions so far? No, but I, because I love dill, but I was wondering if you could use, you know, I'm sure you could use other um, herbs if people don't like dill. Absolutely. Absolutely. Dill's such a great companion to salmon, the flavors yeah. together, but you could definitely use whatever your favorite, you know, you could use some parsley in there, some finely chopped parsley. All right, so I've got that mixed up. Now here's where my sous chef's gonna come in because she, Lauren is my cupcake um, decorator. She loves piping 
So I'm going to let her do the piping in the jars. So if you want to, in my piper, the jars ready. So she she's going to actually put the uh, yogurt sauce into the bag. So let's show them what we're using. This is, I have the Wilton um, pastry bags. I use the disposable ones and then we just fill it up and then I put the large tip on there. So, um, you know, it's easy to pipe out. I'm trying to think what tip this is. Anyway, it's the large whole tip. Um, you can easily use a plastic bag and put it in there and just snip the end off and pipe it in. You can spoon it in too, but it's just harder to get it in there without getting the edges all messy. That. I'll hold it open while you fill the bag. Another reason to chop the cucumbers and the onion really small is so it'll fit through that piping hole. So make sure you can pipe it in there. So one fun fact I'll share. I went to a blogging um, retreat. It's called Blog Brulee. It's put on by um, a group of registered dietitians and they have uh, they have cooking demonstrations and educational workshops, and it's a lot of fun. But when I was there one year, I think it was 2014 or 2015, I met the Siggy, like the owner of Siggy's Yogurt. So he was there. Wow. <laughs> so that was kind of fun. And honestly, that's where I got the inspiration for this recipe. Uh, they did a similar recipe there at the um, retreat with the skier. And I was very inspired to come back and, and make this. So it's one of my favorites. And I always get requests at parties if I make it. They just, they just love it because it's pretty to serve and it's, Tasty. If you're a salmon lover, if you're not a salmon lover, then no, but I love smoked salmon and I actually um, already kind of, you know how smoked salmon comes in that thin package and it's stuck together, it's sliced really thin. Sometimes it's really hard to pull apart. So I went ahead and did that and um, cut it into smaller pieces for fitting into the glasses. Um, one tip with smoked salmon, you can often find good deals on it at price clubs. I'll usually go to Costco, uh, Sam's, BJ's. They all seem to have good deals on salmon. So I haven't really found other places in and around Charlotte where I have bought it. Laura, where do you buy your salmon? Usually at Costco. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, where a so do they it. have the smokes where at Costco do they have the smoked salmon though it's they have it in the refrigerated section mm -hmm. in the refrigerated section because my thing is I didn't want to buy too much of it I was I was looking at it today I didn't buy it because I wasn't ready to make them but um Harris Teeter actually had like single portion smoked salmon that you could buy um and things like that if you weren't going to make a lot but I wanted to see how you worked the salmon and how you presented it before I got it too, so. Yes, yes. All right, so what we're gonna do, we've got, Lauren did a beautiful job on our- Look at that. You know, <laughs> very fancy. Um, so I might've like filled them a little bit less, but no, this is perfect. We can work with this. Um, we're gonna do uh, some cucumbers. I'm gonna get us another small spoon and just, Put some cucumbers in each glass. Okay, and then grab a fork. You 
each glass gets some sand. Oh, okay. So you want it chopped in smaller pieces. That way you can, and you can put as much or as little as you like in there. Are you kind of just folding it on itself and putting it on there? Exactly. Okay. Because it comes so thinly sliced already and then right. you can just kind of fold it in there, push it down. And a smaller piece. And then to top, you're going to top each one with some capers. I love capers. To make sure these are pretty drained so you don't get the brine in there. It's just really salty. Smoked salmon's already salty. You don't need to add to that. So you're going to top each one with some capers and then you're going to garnish with some fresh dill. And this is just the pretty finishing touch. You can also add a little bit extra lemon zest if you'd like. I didn't even think of this till they're beautiful. So you could actually make these ahead, stick them in the fridge and have them ready to go. Absolutely. This is a yeah. great make ahead. I mean, if anything, you could do, um, you don't want to chop the cucumber too, too early because of the, you know, it gets a little watery, but it, it'd be fine. I would maybe just have everything prepped and then assemble them right before. Got but you, it. Could, you could do a few hours before for sure. Okay. And that's it. Beautiful. So fun. And like I said, if you don't have the glasses, Still make the recipe, you can just put it on a platter and serve your sauce in a bowl and then have all your garnishes around so that um, everyone can make their own. I love to serve this with everything bagel chips because I love the combo of the everything bagel chips with the smoked salmon. Um, but I have some crackers here. So tonight we're doing crackers. I'm just using what I have on hand, but you could do um, Ritz crackers, everything bagel chips, club crackers, any kind of, you know, whatever you like as far as um, crackers go, you can grab it with that. Anyone have questions? No, it looks wonderful. <laughs> All right. So that's smoked salmon. Um, and the next one, we're going to do our uh, ricotta and walnut tarts, tartlets, the little bites. Now for these, I use the phyllo, uh, phyllo shells, phyllo shells. Uh, you can get these in just about any grocery store, freezer section. Um, Trader Joe's might even have these. Laura, do you know Trader Joe's has these? I'm pretty sure they, they must. They do. They, they have do. their own brand. Okay. So yeah, these are, these are great. They're easy. You can do so many appetizers with these. And the nice thing is you just pop them in the oven at 350 for just like three to five minutes to crisp them. And then they're ready to fill and, and do your recipe. So um, tip on that. And then I just have them. We've already, uh, Chris, we already had these in the oven for a bit. So they're ready to fill and bake. And to start this one, let's see. Oh, so you're cooking the phyllo ahead of time the phyllo cups so, ahead of time 
The cups, yes, and they only take a few minutes. They're just to warm them up and it's just three to five minutes. Okay. And, and you'll follow that on the package directions. That's um, on the phyllo, on the tar package. Okay. Directions. It'll tell you to, to crisp them, how long to do that. I'm just gonna move these out of the way so you can see what I'm doing with the next one. I'm gonna take a sip of my mocktail. <laughs> I see Brownie has calmed down. He must have gotten tired of begging. All right, so what I'm doing now, I'm gonna place um, some seedless grapes in a large bowl. They've already been washed um, and they're ready to go. And to that, I'm gonna add some olive oil. And then we're gonna add in some salt and pepper, just a little bit to taste. I like to use the coarse salt because I like the texture um, on roasted things. So I've, I do the coarse salt. And I'm gonna grab a spoon. We're just gonna toss those around a little bit, make sure they're nice and coated. And let me grab a baking sheet for these and we're gonna pop these in the oven. So these just go on a baking sheet. And you want to do these at 425 and they're gonna take um, about 10 minutes to roast the grapes, incredibly easy. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop these in. All right, while those are cooking, we're gonna make the filling for the um, ricotta bites. So I have um, the ricotta cheese in a bowl. I've already measured that out. And then we're gonna stir it until it's fluffy. You wanna take it out of the fridge um, a little while beforehand, at least an hour before, hour to 30 minutes ahead of time because really cold ricotta is just harder to stir up. So you want it about room temperature. And then to that, I'm gonna add some fresh basil and some chopped walnuts. So just a few simple ingredients. I've already chopped some basil. And then we're just gonna add in some chopped walnuts and then a little more salt there. Okay. Stir that up. And just like um, you can swap out the nuts for whatever nuts you like, if you wanted to use a different herb, like before we talked about with the salmon, you can switch up the herb. I like this combo. I was gonna say, I'd have a hard time figuring out what herbs would go with that besides the basil. I can see the basil going. Mm hmm I mean, you could do parsley or yeah. Uh, yeah but the basil's a good, a good compliment. So that's it. We've got our filling ready to go. We're just going to wait for the grapes, and then we will um, top top them. So I'm just going to use the filling, and I'm going to fill our shells. Add a little bit more walnuts in there. Has anyone baked with these little shells before? Yes, but not in a long time. You can do some fun desserts. So I'm just going to fill each one. And the recipe calls for, well, it says 16. I could only find these um, shells in a pack of 15. I'll have to see how many you get in the Trader Joe's pack. <laughs> 
So 15, 16. It's the same, 15. It's, I don't know why. <laughs> it is, yeah. No sense in buying two packs for one more. Just go with 15. And then eat the filling by yourself. Exactly. The extra filling. That that's that's how I like to roll. <laughs> so what is what is everyone doing for the holidays? Do you have any Thanksgiving plans? We're driving up to my sister, so I don't have to, and it's a 10 hour, 11 hour, it's uh, Eastern Pennsylvania. So, oh. um, so I will not be, yeah, I'm not making this kind of stuff. Um, unless I get the stuff, it will, it, it will get there so late. So I kind of, not for that, but Christmas, definitely around the corner for that. Right. We'll be doing that. I feel like we just jumped from spring to fall. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this year has flown by so fast. I'm, I'm ready. I'm feeling a little ready for the holidays. They already have one tree up in my kitchen. Oh my it's gosh. Not, <laughs> it's not decorated, but it's there and it's, it's ready to be. I, I bought a new tree for my family room and my kitchen this year. Um, so we have larger ceilings here and I needed a taller tree. So I'm ready to decorate. It just makes me happy. I like to look around and see all the decorations. It just feeds my soul. I'm the same way. I've already started decorating too. Yeah. Yeah. I know my husband, my... my husband thinks I'm crazy for putting anything up before Thanksgiving. Like he's one of those people where he thinks that nothing should happen until after Thanksgiving. Right. He's yep. he's learning to deal with me. <laughs> It's been My 25 husband. years. He's, he's like giving up on that one. <laughs> all right. So all the shells are filled and they're, they're ready. Um, so we'll just wait for the grapes and I guess chit chat with our mocktails or champagne until it's ready. <laughs> so then, so you don't have to actually wait for the grapes to pull off or do you? Uh, you don't. I mean, they, you can put them on top warm from the oven and that will, what you're going to do actually is, um, you're going to bake these for 10 minutes. Oh, right. Because you got it. Oh, I missed that part. Okay. Got it. Got it. Got it. Yeah. Yeah. So you're going to put the, put them in for just 10 minutes with the, you're going to roast the grapes and then you're going to actually top them and then pop these in for 10 minutes and garnish with a little extra basil and you're done. 